the legs. It is finally time to have a control center, a place for me to push buttons and them not fall off or be zip tied. This is the center of the car, the heart of being able to turn it off when shit gets weird. And it starts with this little guy. As you've seen it, it's been just <laughs> zip tied into where the head unit for a sound system would be on an FD. We're gonna continue keeping it in that spot, but we're actually gonna make a panel that then is tacked to the chassis so I can mash those buttons when I lose my race. Down here is a 80 thousandths thick piece of metal. We will then drill holes for the mounting tabs and clearancing stuff like this out. We have the manual mill for this because there we have the DRO, digital readout, and as we move it, obviously, it changes numbers. We're just gonna blast through it pretty, pretty quickly. So the outer edge of each of these, just shy of three inches. Find the measurement of one of these, zero it out, you measure the total, 2.68 inches, and that's the distance between the center of holes. Now we'll go the opposite way. Now that we've got both of those done, we're gonna swap drill bits out. Turned out pretty good. Clean this off, and then we're just gonna see if this'll look like it wants to line up with it. You know, forced perspective, but the holes line up beautifully. This is the front and rear brake biasing thing and so it's got a center hole that we're going to cut out right now. Love the smell of the wood. Mm. Passing so far. Well this thing decided just to quit on me. It just keeps going in a power cycle mode. You think it's good for a second. You're like yeah cool. Perfect, and then it wigs out. There we go, thank you. Show the audience that I'm not crazy. Cool. So, yeah. It's got me doing mental math. I purposely went deep on that, because in the rest of my life I don't really get to go very deep. And I need to plunge this tool in there, so I had to make room for that. Since I don't have five eighths. This is what I'm reduced to doing. So I'm super happy with how all these holes turned out. I actually used an end mill on the last one in a uh, drill truck, which is actually could pull the drill truck off of its taper here, but it worked because it was going very slow. It's finally time to cut this piece out and we've got our main panel. This is the gratifying part about this process. Bam, you have to kind of take my word for it, but all the holes line up. Even that one lines up. Almost perfect. I just put it in the billet polishing machine and there you go. Maybe adjusting this little knob when I think it's my brakes when it really is my driving skill. And then this one, I just wanna make sure it's running. That's the water pump and I can adjust that center knob if I'm doing diagnostics, but really I'm not gonna be doing much with those. I just don't like them flopping around. I'm also going to need to add this push button and this really, it's a really nice quality knob. Those are gonna go somewhere on this plate as well, maybe in this bottom corner. So it'll be USB, USB, all-wheel drive on off, all-wheel drive adjustment. This one is just like the other two USB ports. That one's easy. It's this one, see that little that little knob or the little hook right there? I'm gonna drill a little hole for that so that way once it's in, you don't spin this and this whole thing spins when it loosens and then now you don't know what percentage is what. Bigger hole, smaller hole. Little one looks perfect. Okay, clean up those threads. 
Please just work the first time. There it is. I'm like the king of shitbox cars, and yet sometimes it feels good to use the right equipment. Look at that, which means this goes on. Thankfully, Full Race included this little connector because this one has to be slid in that way. There's just no way around it. So we'll take all of these off, slide it through, and lock it in. And with that disconnected, it fits right in there. And it looks like it's got a LED ring around the push button itself. And then this, I don't think there's a setting to turn it to 11, but it'll go all the way up and all the way down. That's locked in too, look at that. That little hidden tab right there locks this in, so it's not gonna be incorrect at any point. So with this the way it is, we're definitely gonna have to trim this piece more. We're trying to figure out where, because right now that's sitting off a little bit. So that gives us kind of an idea of where this is gonna be. I think we'll cut up, that way it's not in this crotch it's it's sitting up higher in the middle where we're gonna hit it it gives us room for gauges too if we ever go for something up here that works we won't cut that until we bend this somewhere this might be good might not be good just shy of five just shy of five let's hope i measure it right certainly gonna prevent it from flexing as much so that'll help like i said with some rigidity i want to mount this in a way that i'm sitting here and i push this that force is gonna go that way. At least be one mount coming from that side of the car to this. Shy of five, just shy of five, two, Yeah. This is where my little old school DIY is gonna show through perfectly. We have that piece all mocked up. I bolted one plate to it, had Chris cut a couple pieces off, and then we used scrap to bolt from the transmission, which is hard mounted to the car, and then figured out exact angles and pitch and height, depth with all the damn dash moving around. We got an exact angle of where that panel is gonna go, and because it's triangulated, it's uh, it's not gonna bend as soon as we take it out. It looks wild, but nice little jig for exactly where that's gonna go. Keeping its position. The scrap pieces being put to use. So now we can take the dash out. Okay. these not only are we using this jig to prevent us from moving it too much but we're also using it so that way when it welds in on the back side it doesn't start to pull away or do something stupid like that that's what feels right right there got my shifter i'm gonna need to get isaiah to give me it back is i have my rogue fab tube bender and i want to just take a nice little one inch small tube it's got a real pretty radius piece on it and just bend it and make it look kind of organic. Well, this is awesome. One of the test pieces we had done before, we had saved all the scraps because I'm a pack rat and I have one of the wider radiuses right here. It was supposed to be for this piece right here, but we bent it to 90 and didn't like how that looked. We wanted that wider angle. So we're gonna cut this off at some point and I'll have to match the angle of the plate. It'll end up being something like this and we'll we'll get this to look to look good i'm either going to do it this way going off of the main tube chassis serving you information off of the straight edge or i'm gonna have the straight edge come off of the chassis and then this will get cut up to that i can't tell which one i like better
With this notched and cleaned up, it actually turned out pretty good. 95% where I wanted it. It's got a little bit of twist I gotta fix. But I tried a couple different places. I tried a couple different angles, vertical, under, and this seemed to be the best of everything. The goal was to, for it to go in line with the thing underneath it. So there's some aesthetics to it. Give enough space for the fuel tech systems to be pulled out. And then of course, look good connecting to there and giving a direct force. So when I push on it, it's not bending this tube. I contemplated having it come from up here, which was kind of cool. Uh, but it just it just didn't feel right. So I put this piece onto a chunk of aluminum because aluminum will absorb more heat So the front side doesn't get so nasty. And then we've got this Which I've marked but Yeah, you can see it's still yeah. Let's see how it fits in the car It's gonna look horrible because there's a ton of shit all around it, but that's half true. There it is. Those wires further out of the way. That is exactly where it's gonna be. Between my legs. That's so cool. So, so happy with how that turned out. I can keep going, but I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it cool down. But look at that. There's my, my very first, uh, solid weld with my knees <laughs> i'm just so happy with how that turned out you know nothing so ever perfect but for doing that with my knees uh, you know as you saw earlier and holding that heat i don't know i'm really happy because this is all my car i welded all the way around this side and tacked one on the back side but i'm gonna have to pull the car apart and have it up on a lift to finish the rest but i want to see this side There's a little bit of, <laughs> I can fix that a little bit. I should have, uh, I should have dimple dyed these. I didn't think about, this one should have definitely been dimple dyed and it would have prevented that completely. But once they're bolted in, it's gonna stay in the spot it's at right now. I made sure this mount was still underneath the keypad a little bit. So when you press the keypad, the bolt that's right next to this, I mean, that's, That's exciting, that is so exciting. You guys don't know how exciting it is for this, to be doing this myself, whatever, three in the morning, but I can do it. it feels good. Once I tighten the screws, oh my god. <laughs> 